Hi Leo, this is Eileen with your April 2019 Psychic Tarot Card Reading. And we're starting the month of April with the Five of Pentacles card. So what this is saying is that some of you Leos might be feeling like you don't have quite enough money to go around. Or I'm feeling like some of you might be having some kind of relationship issues and money's involved also where money's an issue or some kind of problems with money or disagreements in some way over money. Um, this is a general reading. So some cards will resonate with some people while other cards may resonate with others. If I'm doing a private reading, then I'm just focusing in on that person's circumstances. And I am tuning in on a psychic level as well as reading the meanings of the cards. And now this is a minor arcana card. It is talking about something that's kind of transitionary. It does, it's not necessarily some long-term situation. It might just be a temporary, or for some of you, maybe it's been months or maybe it's been in recent years. Uh, whatever it is, it's a phase some of you might be experiencing right now. But there's nothing permanent about it. That's what I'm getting here. And um, I am feeling, I'm tuning in for someone. Uh, this might be some kind of situation where someone is either separated or getting a divorce or divorced, something like that. And this breakup has really hurt you financially. And I'm feeling that, um, uh, you know, I feel like it's a, female Leo and um, the man you were either married to or living with or something, um, it's like he's in a good position financially and you're not. And it's been especially hard on you, the breakup, because the financial part has been real difficult. And it's almost like he's kind of removed from it, like he doesn't feel he really needs to help you, or he might help you a little bit, but not very much, that type of thing. That sounds specific for one person that I'm tuning in for. I mean, it might be a few people, but it's at least one person. Um, let's see what else I'm getting here. And then others of you may have just been having some kind of financial issues in general where uh, I'm feeling work-related things. Maybe some of you are not working at jobs where you're making enough money right now, or you might be in between jobs at the moment, that type of thing going on school has just come into my mind. Somebody might be in school and so you really can't go work at a full-time job. You're, you don't have the time to do it, but money's short, money's tight. This, uh, um, I always like to tell people to learn about the laws of attraction and practice the laws of attraction. This is the type of situation you can work your out your way out of using the laws of attraction by feeling prosperous, feeling successful, uh, making it your intention to improve your circumstances, finding little ways to keep working at it, make a plan for yourself, and start working on your plan for ways to uh, get out of the hole you fell into. <laughs> so, uh, and again, this is a general reading. So this card might just resonate with a few, you know, certain people. Okay. And other people might not relate to it at all. Uh, the next card we have is the two of swords and the two of swords is talking about some of you being in a position in April where you need to make up your mind and you don't know what to do. See, she's got the blindfold on. Um, it's like for some of you, you might be in a relationship with two different people at the same time and you don't know which one to choose. Like you feel a connection to each of them in one way or another. Uh, somebody might be feeling more obligated to one person because you've been with that person a lot longer and you know them better. And you're comfortable with that person. But another person has come into the picture. Um, and it, it puts you in kind of a dilemma. Like uh, you're not sure what you should do. I'm feeling, if I'm wondering, because uh, it feels like someone, you, you're, there's someone you've been with for a while. And it's been a good, strong, solid relationship. And you're feeling, you're see, you might be seeing it with your own eyes. Somebody's flirting with your uh, partner or trying to win them over in some way. Or maybe, um, or maybe you're suspicious of it. Maybe they're not doing it right out in an 
outward manner, but in some little underhanded sneaky manner or something, kind of like they're drawn to your partner and, and feeling like they're kind of innocent about it, like they can't help how they feel. It's not like they're having this attitude, like they want to take what's yours. It's more of a feeling that they're just drawn to this person and they feel kind of um, um, this, uh, you know, like they're interested and they're, and you might be aware of it and you're not sure what you should do. What's the right course of action for you to take? That does sound specific for one person. There's different scenarios going on here. For some of you, this might have to do with um, making a decision about a job. You might have two different job situations you could choose from, and you're not sure which one to choose. But I'm getting a lot of people relationship matters here for a number of you. Some of you might have friends that are having some disagreement, and you don't want to side with one or the other, or you don't want to hurt someone. Um, you're trying, but but I. I do feel you tend to be more on one person's side than the other. I'm getting more of that. But you're just not sure what to do. The advice when you're in a situation like that, when you're just in some kind of dilemma, you know, you got to take off the blindfold. you got to step back from the situation, look at it objectively, and use your intuition. So you're trying to use your logical mind, be an objective, but at the same time, use your intuition and make whatever choice you really feel inside of yourself is the best one for you in your life and try not to let the opinions or uh, what other people are telling you or whatever it is cloud your judgment. Use that sword energy to cut through the clouds to have clarity for yourself so you can make the right kind of decisions for yourself about your life. Next card we have is the Hierophant. And the Hierophant is typically talking about organized religions or um, institutions, maybe like um, educational institutions or government institutions and that sort of thing. But for a number of you, I feel like this has to do with whatever religion you grew up in, that some of you might still be connected to that religion. Maybe you attend some of the services, maybe not on a regular basis. Maybe it's a here and there kind of thing. Or maybe if there's some something going on, you know, where it's taking place in church, synagogue, whatever, that you go and you attend. But at the same time, you've been kind of removed from it, and you've been developing your own spirituality. And in some cases, you're really not sure what your path is in that way. It's like the, the organized religion you grew up with, well, that that's all fine, but it's a bit overly structured, you know, and bureaucratic. And... Um, you're not feeling like you really fit into that exactly, but at the same time, you're aware of it and you're fond of it in some ways, but um, almost like some of you may have not found your own path yet. That's what I'm getting. Um, and then others are definitely on a more spiritual path, and it's like that's where you know you're headed, and that's what you know you're doing, even though you might still connect in small ways with the um, religion you grew up in. And then for some of you, you might be seeking advice from someone that you see as a wise person, whether it's in an organized religion or some other spiritual community or whatever, you might be seeking out advice from someone because you might have things going on that you need clarity about and you're just trying to get some somebody's advice who would give you good advice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a major arcana card. So this could be going on for a lot of people right now where you're transitioning in that area or you're at a place at a crossroads where you're really looking at your life and looking ahead and looking at the universe and um, trying to put things together and figure out what's your best course of action on a more spiritual level. Okay, and then the next card we have is the Nine of Wands. So for a number of you, you might really be working long hours right now and feeling exhausted or in April, this is the April reading, feeling exhausted like, oh my God, how much more of this do I have to do? Um, I mean, it's like you're very strong. You're capable of continuing on, but it's like a number of you might be working two jobs or maybe you're going to school and going to work or you might be busy at your job all day, then have to go home and you have a lot of work to do at home. And um, it's like you're not going to give up. There's no way you're giving up. You're very strong, and you've been through this before. It's nothing new. 
it's just sometime you just need a rest and so I mean the advice of this card is to again it's good to step out of your circumstances look at it objectively see if there's any kind of delegating you could do of any of your responsibilities whether it's at work or at home if you can delegate some of the work to take some of the load off of your shoulders because it's, you know, you really need to try to have as much balance in your life as you can, get enough sleep at night, have some recreation, you know, have some time just to, to relax and, and kick back and enjoy yourself a little bit. Uh, you don't want to get um, so bogged down in all, all your obligations. But, I mean, a lot of people have those times in their life where it's like they don't, it's like for some period of time, they just have to deal with that. Um, but Leos are very strong. And um, the fire signs, they just, you know, they keep going and going. They have a lot of strength and inner, inner fire and inner strength in them. Um, I'm an Aries, and it seems like on somewhat regular basis, this card comes out for Aries. And every time I see it, I just feel like, oh, what else is new, you know? So it's like nothing new. This is just typical. But, I mean, it is good to try to strive for some balance, catch up on your sleep, try to find a way if you're going through that. Again, it's a general reading. Some people may not even, some people might already have things balanced out pretty good, but others are going through some difficulties in that area right now. Okay, the next card we have is, the, have is the Empress card, and this is a major Arcana Destiny card. It's a really good card, actually, and it's talking about a number of you Leos have achieved a pretty good balance in your life. You work hard. You've been working hard for a good while, and you're pleased with your progress and what you've accomplished and what you've done for your life, how you've balanced your life your responsibilities. It's like you have a lot of responsibilities, but you've managed to get them in pretty good balance for yourself. So you work hard, but then you play hard, you relax, you try to get your sleep, and you're reaping the, the benefits, reaping the rewards of your work and determination and dedication. And a number of you are feeling good about what you have now, feeling prosperous, enjoying your prosperity, enjoying your home. I feel like a number of you have made your home to look in a way that's very nice for you. It's comfortable, it's uh, beautiful, or it's just, it's you, you know, it's like it matches who you are. So when you get home from work, you can relax and feel a little, maybe give yourself some small luxuries here and there and just feel good in your environment. And um, that's such a good thing to do because it helps to attract more good and more prosperity to you when you can feel prosperous and do little things for yourself even if they're small things you know that just make you feel a little more luxurious it could be small you know having dishes you eat out of that are really nice that are very pleasing for you so when you eat out of those dishes it just makes you it, it, it's inspiring it makes you feel good it makes you feel prosperous and like things are good or um, just any number of small things you can do for yourself that uh, can give you that little feeling of luxury like some people like those um, what are those real soft cottony soft bathrobes and stuff like that you know just any little bits of whatever's that may give you a little more feeling of, of being a little luxurious and attracting it just helps you mentally it helps you you send you send out that kind of vibration when you're feeling like you're enjoying um, some good quality um, luxuries little luxuries in your life it sends out that vibration out to the universe that that's the life you lead that's who you are are. Um, that's what you uh, radiate with, you um, relate to, and it helps the universe to bring more of that into your life. And I feel like a number of you Leos are doing some version of that in your lives right now. That's what you're doing because you have been working a lot and accomplishing things and you're enjoying the fruits of your labor. So that's really good. Okay. Next card we have is the Tower card, and this is another major arcana card. So what this is saying is that some of you Leos in the month of April 
are going to have something that might be crumbling on you that was not built on solid ground. For some of you, this could be a relationship that you've been in that you, I fe I'm feeling like for those of you who are affected by, the, by this tower energy in April, you already knew it was coming. That's what I feel like. You were already, like, let's say it was a job you weren't happy with and you knew wasn't right for you. It wasn't paying you enough. It just wasn't the right thing for you. And you just knew it, but you would just stay in there for the time being because maybe there's nothing, doesn't seem to be anything else available right now, that type of thing. Or maybe it's a relationship and it's like, uh, you know, kind of like this, this is not the right thing to be in, but yet you were kind of still in it somehow or still involved or it could be some living arrangement some of you have been in that it, it, it wasn't the right it wasn't really home for you and then that might end up not going well you know but it's like something might crumble for some of you but it's a good thing because it gets it behind you because there's much better in store much better up ahead for you it's like something um the feeling I'm getting here is that it's not something you need now. It's so if it's been taken from you, it's because you've you you've gotten whatever use you were supposed to get of that situation. It's it's over with. You know there was it was nothing really of good quality for you to begin with. That's what I'm feeling like, and I do feel like this is just pertaining to certain Leos. I don't feel this is everybody. I feel some of you will be affected by this tower energy. But I do feel that it was obvious. You already knew it. You didn't. Uh, the feeling I'm getting is that you didn't feel this in your heart, that you didn't feel, um, you know, it didn't inspire you, whether it was a job, a relationship, a uh, living arrangement. It just made you feel lifeless almost, like just yuck, you know, like, oh, what am I doing here? Um, and, and, so it crumbles under you because you weren't supposed to have that anyway. You're supposed to have much better than that. So for those of you who are affected by it, don't fret, okay? It's bringing you better things. You're getting better things on the horizon. That's what I'm getting out of this big time. Next card we have is the Knight of Swords. And this kind of and um, working together with the Tower, the Knight of Swords is talking about quick, abrupt changes that might take place could be chaotic even. So it could be for those of you that something changes or gives way all of a sudden, it might happen out of the blue almost like or seemingly out of the blue. I'm feeling for some of you there's some kind of argument that takes place for some people where everything just kind of, you know, explodes a bit in some kind of explosive argument and it's something's over. It feels like for some of you it's some kind of relationship, but again, maybe some living arrangement or even a, a, a job of some sort. I'm feeling more relationship or a living arrangement about this argument thing. And uh, whatever it is, the Knight of Swords is coming in and bringing quick action. It's like um, no use hanging around looking at the crumbles and crying about the crumbles here. Move on. It's like the Knight of uh, Swords is giving you that change a lot. And uh, this is a lot of times it's change for the better, but it's chaotic and that means it's stressful. You know, you might feel like you're being uprooted all of a sudden and have to move on to something else. And sometimes the universe just does that. I mean, it's stressful for us, but it it's happened. I mean, I've had those kind of things in my life. And it's like everything just happens fast. And all of a sudden you're being whisked away to another scene, uh, kind of like another scene in a movie or something. And all of a sudden you're in another setting and you're doing other things. And then you look back later after you after everything, the dust settles, like, oh, that was a good thing after all. So this is good. I interpret it's stressful at the moment for whoever is affected by this in April, but it's a good thing. It ends up being better for you going forward. So, okay, next card we have. And then again, I wanted to add in, you can build on solid ground. Okay, build on solid ground, whether it's a relationship, job, home environment, whatever. And that's what I'm feeling is more in store for you from this place here. Next card we have is the lover's card. And the lover's is about making choices, making choices whether or not to be in a relationship or to stay in a relationship. Now, also, for some of you, this is about what you're passionate about. Some of you, it might have to do with a business 
or some other project that you're passionate about, whether or not you want to get into it or you want to continue it. It's about having choices to make. I do feel for a number of you, there's a lot of relationship things going on here with romance. I feel like for um, some of you, you might be seeing somebody and dating somebody right now and you're enjoying yourself, but you're not really ecstatically happy, you know, and the other person is much more interested in you. That's what I'm getting. That might be one or several of you. I'm not sure. The other person is much more interested in you and pursuing you, and you're more feeling like, well, this might be good for now, but who else is out there? Kind of like you're not you're not so sure about that person. And uh, I mean, and anybody, if you're feeling that way, that means the person you're with, how could they be the right one? Because the right one for you, you're going to really want to be with them as much as they want to be with you. So you're right to be thinking about who else is out there. So it's, it's good not to commit to someone in any way that um, you're not sure about. Because you don't want to be tied up and miss your opportunity to meet the right one. Because I feel like those of you who are in that situation now where you're seeing someone and you're not that sure about that person, it's like you're kind of sometimes you're, you're yeah, yeah, they're nice. They're good. That's a good person to be with. And But then, you know, a little time's going by. And it's like, I'm not so sure about this. Don't, don't convince yourself. Don't talk yourself into being with someone. Hold out because I'm feeling a number of you, if you do that, you've got a really good relationship coming your way. That's what I'm getting. You have something really good coming your way that's really going to be a good match for you that's going to make you happy and make you joyful. I feel like it's someone from a previous lifetime that you were with and you're supposed to meet up with them again in this lifetime. So it's all the more important not to be committed to anyone. You know, make sure you're staying as single and free and as available, even if you want to, even if you're with the other person that you're not sure about in the short term, don't, don't make commitments to them. You know, don't tie yourself up where they expect you all the time to be with them every weekend. Then they, all of a sudden they're um, having a fit or wondering what in the world's going on. If you can't see them this weekend, you know, uh, try to be as kind of, um, separate as you can. Keep things as separate so you can be free. Not only that, you want your energy to radiate that you are free and available. And when you're wrapped up with somebody else, your energy is not really doing that the way you want it to. You know, you're kind of being tight, held back for that time. So well, you want to be as open and radiating that kind of energy of being totally available to be with who you want to be with and go where you want to go. And because I do feel some of you have a really strong relationship that it's from a previous lifetime, it's going to be a really good, um, it's going to be passionate, but with fun and love and romance and all the good things. It's just a really good connection with someone. Uh, it's going to be unbelievable. That's what I'm getting. I mean, I say it's unbelievable. It's almost like you'd be feeling this is too good to be. Is this real? This has got to be real. It feels real, but I'm. Uh, how could I be so lucky? That's what it feels like for some of you. You have that coming your way. And again, this is a general reading, but I'm tuning in specifically for uh, a few, sometimes just one person, sometimes a few, sometimes a number of people, and I'm getting that for a number of you. Um uh, the next card we have is the Knight of Cups. And the Knight of Cups, now Cups do represent the water signs of Pisces, Scorpio, and Cancer. And they represent feelings and love and emotions and all that sort of thing. And the Knight of Cups is talking about um, someone maybe bringing you good news. Maybe someone's bringing you news about a wedding or um, a birth or anything like that. And also, though, I'm getting overall, for the most part, someone being romantic toward you. So a number of you might be meeting someone that maybe they are of a water sign. They might be Pisces, Scorpio, or Cancer, or they might have a lot of that in their chart. And uh, they're going to be so enthusiastic about meeting you and dating you and getting to know you, this person. I just feel like so they'll be showing their enthusiasm towards you. For others of you, you may have been already seeing this person in recent months, maybe a few months, maybe a number of months, but it's still new. It's still the relationship still has a newness about it. 
and I feel like they're going to be professing their love for you or, you know, wanting to make plans with you going forward, maybe to take a, a trip somewhere together or things kind of lining up things as the months are going by and the year is going by for the two of you to do together. They're just so enthusiastic about their relationship with you. And, um, and for others, you might actually be, get a proposal of marriage, but if it's not that, I feel like it's just, I get a lot of nice, happy, energy here like this person is just so enthusiastic about being with you and uh they even get into almost a little dreamy state about fantasizing about when they're going to see you or things they can uh, go and do with you or take you somewhere or whatever so a number of you have may have this uh, set this could be several people or a few people i'm not sure who is either already in your life or they're coming into your life in eight by the end of april so that's just some nice energy there. And then the last card we have is the Nine of Pentacles. This is a really great card. I love ending on a card like this because the Nine of Pentacles is all about enjoying your prosperity, your success, enjoying your home, your surroundings, your friends, family, whatever it is that you're, um, you know, you might have different interests you're cultivating just in your and your free time in the way of something creative. I feel like a number of you might have different creative interests, things that you do. Some of you might make things, or maybe some of you are into uh, cooking or baking or gardening or who knows what. I just feel there's different, you're um, cultivating your own interest, enjoying your own um, prosperity and all that you have to be grateful for, enjoying your home and just celebrating, celebrating all all the good, good time. It'll be springtime weather and everything and just um, a feeling of abundance and prosperity for a number of you and just being aware of that and being grateful for it, recognizing it, just enjoying it, you know. And so, and again, I would recommend anyone who's not feeling this uh, nine of pentacles energy, learn about the laws of attraction. Start feeling like this is who you are and what you're doing in your life, that you're enjoying and celebrating your prosperity and your success, and that you are making the money you want and making the improvements in your life that you want to make. Just make it your intention and start making any kind of small changes. So, you know, you want your energy, energy to be radiating that out, to be radiating out prosperity and abundance. So the universe will they'll go on what the energy is your the universe will listen to pay attention to your energy and deliver more of the same that's why it's so important not to have negative energy not to be miserable or fearful or angry because then you attract things that are going to add more stress to your life um, you want to feel calm and receptive and prosperous and successful as much as you can and happy and joyful and appreciative of all the little things in your life because all the little things add up you know they add up to a lot um, so the universe can deliver more and more of the good to you this is a great card to end on. Okay, now this deck I've been using, this is the um, Gilded Tarot by Cheryl Marchetti. And so now what I want to do is I'm going to pick one card from the Magical Mermaids and Dolphins by Doreen Virtue. And if you like my videos, be sure and subscribe to my channel so you'll be notified when I post new videos. Also, check for your rising and moon signs as they come available because... You might get insights and messages in those readings also because, I mean, they're all general readings, but then I tune in to specific people and circumstances too for uh, some of you or a number of you, and I pass those messages along. So you never know where you might get some in additional insights, whether it's by the meanings of the cards or some kind of additional messages I'm getting that I'm passing along. Okay. So, um, and feel free to leave your comments. I welcome your comments. And if anyone would like a private reading, my rates and contact info are listed below. Okay, Magical Mermaids and Dolphins. What is your message for Leo for April 2019? Leo, what's your message for Leo for April 2019? Okay, I'm going to give it one more shuffle. And then 
fan the cards out. Okay. Oh, okay. I like this. All right. This one says, dream big. Let go of small thoughts about yourself. See yourself succeeding. I love this card. That's a great message. Dream big. Let go of small thoughts about yourself. See yourself succeeding. And that ties in with the things, the messages and things I've been saying here in the reading also. Now the next card I'm going to pick one from is Nature's Whispers by Angela Hartfield with artwork by Josephine Wall. So what's the message for Leo for April 2019? Leo. What's the message for Leo? April 2019. Leo. For April 2019. What's the message for Leo? Okay, I'm going to give it one more shuffle and then I'll fan them out. What's the message for Leo? April 2019. Oh, okay. Well, I like the sound of this right off. Okay. Bountiful Harvest. Okay, that's number 28. I'll look this up in the booklet, too. I love all these colors. This is beautiful. I just love all the artwork in these cards. I wish I could be so talented to do artwork like this. It's so beautiful, so colorful. Wow. The more you look at them, the more you see. Okay, I'm going to look this up. Number 28, Bountiful Harvest. Let's see. Okay, 28. Bountiful Harvest. You have access to the infinite source of love and resources provided by Mother Earth and the universe. There are no demands, requirements, or conditions that affect your ability to access this supply. This is a wonderful reminder and the absolute truth pertaining to the abundance that is available to you. Grant your abundance the opportunity to flow into your life. It will reshape your perspective. It will strengthen and nourish you. This phase holds a plentitude of affluence and fertility. You are lucky and blessed. Wow. I mean, that is a really great message to have. Okay. Now, last but not least, I'm going to pick one card from the Archangel Oracle Cards by Doreen Virtue. So, Archangels, what is your message for Leo for April 2019? Leo, what's your message for Leo for April 2019? What's your message for Leo for April 2019? Okay, I'm going to give it one more shuffle and I'll fan them out. Okay, this one says career transition. Archangel Shemuel, your life purpose is triggering a blessed career change. Wow, that's another really good message. Career transition. Archangel Shemuel, your life purpose is triggering a blessed career change. Fantastic message. You've got some really good messages, good cards. I mean, a couple of stressful ones here and there, but that's the life we live. But otherwise, really good, strong messages here that are very encouraging, very positive. Okay, so Leos, I hope you're happy with your reading for April. And be sure, check for your rising and moon signs also. And um, because there might be additional messages, cards, uh, you know, other um, areas of those readings that you identify with that resonate with you. And feel free to leave your comments. I welcome your comments. Be sure and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so yet. So you'll receive notifications when I post new videos. 
And if anyone would like a private reading, my rates and contact info are listed below. So have a wonderful April, happy spring, and thank you for watching my video.